Welcome to H360 Health Talk. I'm here with my friend and colleague from Healthio 360, Doug Lesko. Today we want to talk to you as we approach the summer months about some tips that are really, really important to keep in mind. Now, some of these tips you're going to say, gosh, Dave, uh, already knew that. Some of them I think, you know, you're going to have to think about a little bit because uh, it's not something that we think about often. But Doug, you know, in doing some research here, there's a couple of categories that I think we need to hit on um, and, and talk about what are some of the do's and don'ts as we approach the summer months. Now, you know, the, uh, the, the weather is getting warmer, the days are getting longer, and I think that there's some things that we need to keep in mind as we're spending more and more time outdoors. So what do you say we jump right in and yeah, we'll go through absolutely. these categories and see what we think? Yeah, I think, you know, there's the obvious one, stay hydrated, What you know, watch your exposure to the sun. Um, but, you know, we need to look out for our elders in the heat and pets and children as well. So it, it, Exactly. And those are some of the topics that I really want to kind of hone in on. So the first one is to practice summer safety tips for kids. And I know this may, may seem a little bit intuitive, but the number one tip, or one of the top on my list is to apply sunscreen. It's so, so important, you know, especially during the early part of the summer season, you know, people will go out, it's sunny. The weather still could be in the 70s and it feels a little bit cool, but that sun is out there in full blazes and you really can get sunburned. So you want to make sure you're applying that sunscreen. Yeah, and they actually say um, even on a cloudy day, you should still wear it because the sun is still putting out UV rays even though it's cloudy out. Absolutely. Now, you know, I, as well as you, we both are, are blessed. We have a full head of hair, gorgeous hair. For now. I want to say. <laughs> um, but if, if you lack a little bit of the hair, if you have a receding hairline or a balding spot, you make sure you want to get that sunscreen there as well because if you're walking around outside without a hat, you know, that's one of the first things that, you know, you're going to feel in the evening, your head's going to be a little bit red. You're going to, you know, wish you would have put that sunscreen on. So make sure that any part of your body exposed by the sun, you've got sunscreen on. Absolutely. And also, you know, if you're at the pool or you're at the beach, you know, if you go in the water, that's going to get washed right off. So you need to, every time you get out of the water, you'll have to reapply again. Yeah. E even some of the sunscreen now on the labeling, I see, you know, it's uh it says you could swim with it and, and, you know, but you should reapply. Absolutely. Now, I like that sunscreen that you spray on. It's just a little bit easier. What do you think about that? I, I do as well because I, I, I will admit I'm a little guilty when it comes to wearing sunscreen. Um, and, you know, part of it's because I just don't like getting it all over me. I, you know, hands you, greasy, you know, all that. Um, so I have uh, started wearing it more. I, you know, I bought the bottle of the spray kind and, you uh, you know, get the arms, face, neck, all that before I go out in the sun. Yeah, ears, Doug, ear, don't forget the ears. Even when you wear a hat, if you're wearing a ball they, cap, your, they're ear, still sticking your, out, your yeah. ears are still sticking out there. You may want to make sure you get sunscreen all across the ears, your earlobes. Um, but I agree. I think I like that spray stuff. And the less I have to get on my hands and, you know, goop up, the, the better off I am. Yeah, I think they also as well, you know, if, if that's your issue, I think they also make a, um, like a roller ball kind of similar to deodorant where you can just, you know, roll it right on. You don't have to touch it at all. You don't have to rub it in. You just roll it right on face, arms, all that. Now, you know, Doug, Nike, Under Armour, a lot of a lot of clothing manufacturers are now making clothing that help block some of the UV light out. So that's kind of interesting too. That's right. So the technology with the clothing has come quite a long way. You know, it used to be always all like heavy, heavy cottons, you know. Now they make a lot of these, such as you and I are both wearing these, these lightweight, breathable, you know, shirts. Yeah. Um, and they're making them in long sleeve now. So, you know, you think, oh, long sleeves in the summertime, it sounds very hot, but, you know, they're very thin, they're breathable, uh, and they block UV rays. So... A lot of companies are starting to switch to that technology. Yeah. Now, one of the things that is very important, not just for, you know, looking out, but also the UV ray light coming into your eyes. You know, you really want to invest in a pretty good pair of sunglasses. And, you know, some of them like Maui Jim and Ray-Ban, you know, they're a little bit on the pricey side, but I think that they've got different types of coatings that will really help protect your eyes from the sun. 
Yeah, I've noticed that, you know, a lot of people buy an inexpensive pair of sunglasses. You know, if, if they're inexpensive, they're definitely not UV blocking. Um, and even some of the more expensive ones you might find, you may think they are, but a lot of times they're not. So you got to really pay attention to that. Now, you hit on an important point earlier about even when it's cloudy, you can still get sunburn. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so you want to make sure, you know, you're, you, you head out, might be clouding over, but those UV ray are still going to get through the clouds. They're still going to be exposed to the skin. You know, some of the the um, body lotion that I see on the market today um, also has some, you know, pr protection in it from the sun. So I think that's a good way to go about it. Um, you know, I know for me, one of the reasons I tend not to put it on is, you know, when as, as I start my day, I, I don't necessarily like plan on being outside for an extended period of time. And then, you know, as you get going, before you know it, you're running errands, you're doing this, you're taking the dog for a walk and so forth. And before you know it, you spent two hours outside that day. So you weren't necessarily planning to spend the entire day outside, but you did spend a couple hours out there between all your trips around, walking here and there. Um, so I think, like you said, if you can find a product such as that, like a lotion, like something you use daily, you know, just make it part of your routine, you know, when you're brushing your teeth in the morning, put it on, you know, even though you not, may not be planning to be outside all day, you will be exposed to the sun at some point during the day. Yep. Okay. Good discussion. Sunscreen, important. Clothing, important. Eye care, important, right? Don't forget the ears, wear a hat. If you're balding, make sure you get the sunscreen on the back of your head as well. Uh, next category is bugs. You know, those little critters are coming out. It's warming up. Yep. Um, mosquitoes, Lyme disease, the ticks. Uh, it, it's really important to remember when you're going outside, you want to protect against that as well. Yeah, that's something, to be honest with you, I, I don't really um, do too much with. Um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of experience with that area. I, I've never really paid too much attention to the bugs. Um, I know, you know, a lot of times if we're uh, hanging outside on the patio or something, a lot of times they can really start to mosquitoes and gnats can really start to bother you. Um, I don't really like to put any of that on, you know, but I, I, we do use, um, you know, like tiki torches or uh, citronella candles. We'll put those out to try to help with that. A absolutely. Now, remember, right, we're, we live in the northeast here. The snow is gone. It's warming up. The ground temperature is warming. Ticks. You have a dog. I have a dog. It's really important during the summer months to inspect your dog, even though you might use that front line or, or a tick collar. Um, you take your dog to the park, you let the dog run around. It's so easy to pick a tick up. The dog brings the tick into the home. The kid plays with the dog. You, you know the rest of the story, right? Yeah, so I have a little one um, and he's about uh, 11 years old now. Um, and you know, when I first got him, I was very religious about that. I would go and get the front line and you know, put it on him every month. And then I kind of got a little lax with it, and I kind of only did it in the warmer months. I figured, oh, the bugs aren't around in the winter time. Um, and then as time went on, I got more and more lax with it. Well, about two years ago now, um, he tested positive for Lyme's disease. Um, and at this point now, there's not much we can, you can't really do anything. You can't treat it. You can't do anything about it. Now, luckily, most dogs don't really ever uh, show any symptoms of it. So 90% of them live perfectly normal lives. You never see any symptoms from it. Um, so we never noticed anything. You know, he wasn't uh, lethargic or anything like that. So we never noticed it. We did, you know, over the course of those 11 years, pick quite a bit of ticks off of him. Yeah. Um, so I kind of blame myself for that, you know, not really being very religious with the, the treatment or the, you know, the front line yeah. or whatever. I'm not sure every, every treatment is going to protect you 100%. I think it's important that if if the dogs have been out running around in the yard or, or running around in the park, when you get home, just check the dog over. You know, a quick rub down of the legs, underneath the belly, behind the ears. Just make sure, you know, you don't feel a little bump in there because that could be the sign of a tick. And then, you know, what, what you don't want is that tick coming off and, you know, and, and latching on to your child or you or your wife, you know, and then you got a problem. Exactly. And I think you hit it right on the head there. I think that's the more important thing because, as you mentioned, you know, no matter what method you use, whether it's a collar or some kind of ointment or, you know, a shot or something like that or a pill, um, nothing's ever going to completely protect them. So I think, like you said, you know, when they go for a walk, you know, if they're in the tall grass or they're in the woods or something like that, just 
check them. You know, yeah. that, that's the best way. Get rid of it as soon as you notice it, um, yep. and that way you can prevent that from happening. A absolutely. Pools of standing water tend to, you know, uh, gather mosquitoes, uh, bugs. You know, you want to be careful about that. And then also, you know, having a child or walking around with a, a sweet type of drink uh, will tend to, you know, attract them, att yeah, attract yeah. flies or att attract bugs and mosquitoes. They smell that that sweet, you know, aroma sugar. from the <laughs> sugar uh, in the drink, and, and then the next thing you know, you have a problem. So, yep. um, a good point. Bugs, keep your eye out. Right, check the dog for ticks. Um, protective clothing. Even if if I go out in the evening and take a walk. If I'm walking off the beaten path, I'll make sure I wear long pants on just to avoid getting bit, bitten by a tick. Um, prevent dehydration. Boy, this one is really, really important. Yeah, so I mean, obviously it goes without saying, make sure you drink pr plenty of water. Um, but a couple other things I've read recently say, you know, a lot of what you eat is very important too. So, you know, you wanna stay away from fried foods in the heat. You wanna stay away from fatty foods. You wanna try to limit the amount of foods you eat as well, because um, eating the food will dehydrate you. So, the, the, you know, if you eat a huge meal, that's gonna dehydrate you. So they, they really suggest on hot days eating smaller meals, you know, more frequently throughout the day. Yeah, um, a lot of melons in the summertime, right? Cantaloupes, muskmelon, watermelon, apples, grapes, all have a tremendous amount of liquid in them uh, as well, and those will help with the, the dehydration. So. You know, when you're, when you're thinking about your day, it's so easy to take a handful of grapes, throw them in a Ziploc bag or grab an apple, um, out the door you go. And, and, you know, if you don't have water readily available, if you're snacking on that during the day, I think that's going to help. Um, and, and kids, too, you got to really, you know, pay attention. I think this is so important for parents um, to make sure that, you know, if your child, you're out playing, they're running around, they're perspiring, they're sweating in the summer heat, they're drinking a lot of fluids, a lot of water. Yeah, so one thing I also saw was, you know, a lot of times in the summertime you see people uh, like smoothies, like fruit smoothies and stuff like that. Probably not the best, right? They're really not because, you know, they're very high in calories and they tend to have a lot of sugar in them. So you really want to try to stay away from them, stay with water, um, as you mentioned, fruits um, and natural juices, stuff that doesn't have sugar and other stuff added to them. So. Fresh fruit, natural sugars, that's okay. What about, what do you think about if you have one of those Nutrisystems or those, those blenders and you throw some fruit in there, put a little bit of water in there, blend it all up, is that, is that Absolutely perfect, yeah, as long as you're not adding any additional sugar or anything that has extra calories into it, you're okay. And a lot of the fruit that I see in the, the frozen section of the store has uh, sugar added in. Yeah, so. and you gotta watch, you know, a lot of that stuff's from concentrate, stuff like that. So you really wanna stick to natural fruit and natural juices. Yeah. Well, Doug, I think we uh, hit on many important topics, certainly not all of them, and I can't wait to pick this discussion up when we meet again next time. Sounds great.